of Christ members and friends. It's nice to be with you again this morning. Today is Sunday, April 26th, and our theme today is Will You Recognize Him? Uh, I would encourage you to continue to share your joys and concerns with us uh, via email, and I'll add them on to my email blast every day so that we can continue to hold each other in prayer. Our call to worship is based on Psalm 116. I love you, Lord, because you have heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because you inclined your ear to me, therefore I will call on you as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O, o Lord, Lord, I, I pray, pray, deliver, deliver my, my soul. soul. What shall I render to the Lord for all the benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all people. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all people, in the courts of the house of my Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Good morning. Our scripture today comes from, from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. And those scriptures talk about two people on a journey and these two people have been through a very harrowing experience, the crucifixion of Jesus, followed by the discovery of the empty tomb. And they are just trying to get away from the city, to get as far away as they can from this horrible experience that they've been through together. We are not unlike those companions on that journey. We are going through what is really an unimaginable experience. Um, who would have thought that we would, our lives would be so different today than they were just even a few short weeks ago. We are adding to our vocabulary now words such as social distancing, shelter in place, and um, the new normal that we're anticipating. We've grown accustomed to talking on a daily basis about quarantine and furloughs and pandemics. Um, who would have thought that we would just expect to see our friends, neighbors, co-workers out in public wearing masks over their face and gloves on their hands and think that that's normal? This pandemic has changed our world forever. And we've been through circumstances before that have changed our world forever. Uh, if you think about the world wars we've our country's gone through, 9-11, natural disasters like hurricanes and tsunamis and tornadoes and mass shootings in churches and schools and shopping malls. When we go through those experiences, what we've always been drawn to is gathering together to show our support. We gain strength by getting together and praying together and singing together and sometimes just sitting together and we show our love for one another by doing these activities for our friends and our families and our coworkers and sometimes even strangers. This pandemic has taken that away from us because we can't gather. We can't even see each other's smiling faces because we're covering those faces with masks. I work in a situation in a company that is considered to be an essential business and we have to continue to keep the business going so that we can take care of our clients, those in wheelchairs that need our assistance. Our company responded to this crisis by first sending a thousand of the workers across the country at home to home to work from offices that they had to quickly put together so that we could keep those people safe and reduce the exposures to others. We then followed that up with having to have some positions eliminated, and so some people completely lost their jobs. And then last week, our company had to take yet another step of furloughing 10% of our workforce that we anticipate getting back when we get to the other side of this COVID situation. With that, each step that the company has taken, the remaining workers have had to pick up the workload to keep our day-to-day -day operations going. And in addition, we've added duties because now we have to mop the warehouse every day 
Um, we have to wipe down every desk, every telephone, every piece of equipment, every computer, every doorknob that might get touched to keep everyone safe moving forward. You have the anxiety of doing your normal job, but now we don't know what the future holds. We don't know that uncertainty is, is weighing heavy on all our minds at work. We're learning new skills so that we can cross cover and do more things. We don't know what is going to be expected of us tomorrow. Much like the people that are sheltering in place, you just don't know what's going on. And that anxiety level across the country, you can feel how difficult this is for people because we want to reach out and touch someone. We want to reach out and hug and show our support, and we can't do that. But what this pandemic has done is it's helping us to grow together. At work, we're bonding as a team because our trust in each other has become so strong because we have to trust that each of us are doing our part to make sure that we're not exposing anyone to additional risk. We have learned to support each other um, by reaching out. We want to see each other, even if only on a computer screen. We've learned the importance of making sure that we are reaching out to people and supporting people and letting them talk about what what is going on in their situation how what is their stress level like what can we do to show our support for one another to show our love and concern for each other and we we found this great technology now that we can go online and see each other we can gather together with with friends and family and strangers across the world, across the country. We can participate in church services with others that we may never have seen. Um, we may be renewing friendships with, with people that we've known for years, but we don't see regularly. And now we're seeing the value and taking that technology that's no more difficult than just picking up a phone. This pandemic has taught us that we are in this together. We are all equal, and we are all going through this at the same time, and our bonds are going to grow stronger. And I can't help but be reminded of the, when I think of the suggested hymn today of Companions on the Journey, about the first time I heard that song, that song that um, has always been one of my favorite songs. But just like those travelers on that journey, we've been preparing for this journey for a long time. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life. In the love we bear is the hope we share, for we believe in the love of our God. No longer strangers to each other, no longer strangers in God's house. We are fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care. We have been gifted with each other, and we are called by the word of the God to act with justice, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with our God. My hope for all of us is that we stay safe. And I hope you take comfort in knowing that we are in this together. And I want to thank you for sharing your time today. Our setting forth today is from Doctrine and Covenants, section 165, verses 3c through e. You do not fully understand many interrelated processes of human creation. Through its wonderful complexity, Creation produces diversity and order. Be not consumed with concern about variety in human types and characteristics as you see them. Be passionately concerned about forming inclusive communities of love, oneness, and equality that reveal divine nature. Oneness and equality in Christ do not mean uniformity. They mean unity in diversity and relating in Christ-like love to the circumstances of others as if they were one's own. They also mean full opportunity for people to experience human worth and related rights, including expressing God's given giftedness in the church and in society. Our benediction today, I'd like us to say the mission prayer together. So would you pray with me? God. Where will your spirit lead today? Help me be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Amen.